Yeah, I've heard that someone one time referred to the Course that way. It's like a trick to get you to fall into forgiveness and then into love. And it's, it's a trick that uses words, which are symbols of symbols, twice removed from reality. And it uses, you know, uh, Shakespearean blank verse, and it uses spectacular poetry, and it uses all kinds of things. I mean, sometimes people would even say, well, okay, I get all of that, but why does Jesus use so many sentences with double negatives? <laughs> How, well, I don't get that part. I get everything else, but I don't get that one. And I said, well, it's another joke, it's another cosmic joke, because it's the undoing of what never was. It's yeah, another... They cancel each other out. They, they cancel each other out. <laughs> and that's all what this is about. It's just about canceling out the error. And seeing that they're all the same. That there's not some illusions that are better than others. You know, the hierarchy is what makes them seem real. And when they are all cancelled out, and you just see them for what they are, then you're free. You're free of them. So it takes, mm. it takes some jolts, and it is pretty much the situation that mm. the sleeping mind is in, that's identified with the body. You have to, it's like the school of hard knocks. You keep bumping up against the glass, you keep bumping up against things in this world, and you can't always see it, it coming. Mm. That's what the shocking thing about hitting glass is. And just think about how it goes in our relationships in particular. We kind of go and it's all, we've watched all the fairy tales and we've listened to all the love songs and then wham, you just hit the glass and wham, you hit the glass. And then you think, well, it's just an accident. And wham, you hit the glass again. And then it seems like, you know, emotionally you're, you're in a spiral, you're going down and down. And then you start to just kind of get numb, you know, and it was almost, you know, just like those old experiments they used to do in psychology, I used to call it rat psychology, where they would just shock animals over and over whenever they would try to do something until they, was stimulus response, a response conditioned behavior of depression. And when you really look at it, the ego is behind this whole script and it has designed this time-space cosmos kind of like stimulus response. So you just keep seeking and not finding. And you seek and you don't find. Just like those rats that get zapped with electricity. You seek and you don't find. You seek and you don't find. You just keep getting zapped and zapped and zapped until you start to get a little bit numb, despondent, and just downright sad and then finally depressed. And that is <coughs> seen as, in this world, is, that is even judged as dysfunctional. So then they, if you go to a psychiatrist, you know, a lot of chances are they'll prescribe drugs to try to handle the depression that the whole dream world was set up to start in the first place. Because you keep banging into the glass and you don't find escape. And there's something inside that knows that none of this is natural. None of it's natural. No matter how many times we go through it, no matter how familiar it becomes, no matter how convenient it becomes, no matter how repetitive it becomes, it's something inside of us that just knows this is not natural. This is not what my life was meant to be. And then when you come to that experience, you may have an experience that gives you just a, a glimmer or a glimpse of something that is real, of something that reflects reality, that's joyful, that's happy. And then that really launches you on your, your spiritual journey. Having a taste of it, how can you ever go back and pretend that you didn't have that experience? You know, it's like a glimmer through all those thick layers of illusion. A little ray of light, a little beam of light 